I'm Justin. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Stefan. Uh, together we are Swine Wine ATX. Uh, there's an Instagram. Uh, they hit us up on email, follow us on YouTube, all that stuff. We're going to social media this now. But what are we Great. drinking, buddy? All right, so uh, this is the first red wine of the series. Uh, this, this is, is the first cool. wine we both have. I know, and we both have it. I have it on my end. He has it as well. And if you'll notice, this is a squat bottle of a wonderful producer uh, called Piedra Sassi. They're out of Lone Park, California. Uh, they founded this label in 2003. It's a super cool label, but it is like, you got to catch the glare to get the, it's, it's not just PS wine, which is what I definitely thought it was. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a whole, there's a whole name to it. So this is the 2018 Piedra Sassi. Uh, this is their Santa Wait. Barbara County. Um, so uh, this is probably the wine they make the most of. It says on the back of the bottle, 1,700 cases. Um, they keep it pretty low production wise. That, I mean, that's the, if that's the highest. That, is that using, nationwide or that just that's, what, like, that's for the vintage? So, oh, well, okay, exactly. That's awesome. That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't strike me as a bunch. Mm -hmm. It's not, it really isn't. Uh, these guys no. are cool because they also have a, a little shop in Lone Park. Um, it, they make they sell their own wine that they make and they also sell uh, bread as well. It's kind of like a bread focused uh, menu, a lot of yeast in that. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're all about it. They're yeast crazy. I got to do, do a shout out to our first uh, fan submission. This, thanks, Jenny, for the uh, vintage wine glasses. Great job, right. Jenny G. Jenny G. Yes. Uh, all right, just go for it. Go. Oh, yeah, that is not pink anymore. Have we left pink? Like, are we done with pink? We're not done with pink. No way. Oh, nice. We just had to, oh, you know, dude. We... Okay, I'm, I'm just cutting you off. And I'm jumping the gun because you're supposed to look at it, but like just it like it totally has like a bread smell, and I was not expecting that. <laughs> and I'm salivating. So let's talk about what it looks like first before. Right. I, oh my it god! Looks like, first and foremost, can you see through it? If you put your hand no. below the wine, can you see through it? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, hand. yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, Syrah, <laughs> another thick skin varietal, and the thicker the skin, the you know higher the outcome of tanning extraction. Um, you know, emphasize okay, I guess and all that nonsense. Yeah. Um, but either way, you can, it's not, it's not completely opaque. So that's cool. Uh, it's purple. Purple's good. Purple's great. Oh, yeah. So, I'm like, so this swirl, is this what you do? Like you shake a Polaroid? It really doesn't really do anything, but. That's not true. The swirl doesn't. Polaroids. Work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your, your swirl is better than mine, too. You know, I'm always, when I'm selling people who aren't super well versed in wine, you know, a lot of people know what they want, but they just don't have the vocabulary for it, which is totally fine. Yeah, everybody yeah. everybody knows what they instinctually like. So you know that like chewing on a T-shirt, like you drink a wine and your mouth is so dry afterwards, and you yeah. you know, I, I don't want. I'm not I'm not looking for that today. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> I'm gonna chew on a T-shirt later for sure. Uh, first and foremost, the wine is like 12.7 percent ABV. Uh, which you said hurt. they did low ABV. That seems pretty like on par what I think of wine. Not necessarily. I mean, sometimes, yeah. I mean, especially when you oh get my to God. that part of California, they, Syrahs typically range for 13.5 to 14% ABV, sometimes mm -hmm. even ranging to 14.5 to 15. Um, so, you know, that all really depends on fruit ripeness. Um, and so they're in a cool climate, so it takes a little longer for these grapes to ripen. Uh, therefore, the ABV, you know, is is a little suppressed. Oh. Uh, so oh. interesting. You drink. You drink. I want to talk about there for for new world wine. You know, typically people are like, "Oh, it's fruit forward," which is great. Yeah. Um, but old world wine typically have a lot has a lot of like tertiary flavors or flavors or um, smells that are of the earth. Um, so what I like about this wine a lot is that there's great balance of fruit and tertiary flavors, but tertiary flavors are the things that I, that come to my nose first. I've really have to seek uh, and try to find the fruit tones of this wine. I have to sort of dive under those tertiary notes. So think about things like. Oh my God. So as you talk, I'm drinking, you know, that's right. Like <laughs> Black pepper, white pepper, black olive top and uh, on. Uh, the wine expert gets black pepper and things I can't pronounce. And this guy gets bread and plums. Uh, bread and plums. I am, I am, but I am living for this wine right now, though. Like, I am about it. Oh, my. This, you're gonna, this is going to be a two-glass episode, bro. 
I like this wine a lot because of its balance, because it's kind of light on its feet for a Syrah. In addition mm. to that, the, the flavor tone of the wine is super long and it has a, lo a lot of evolution to it. So like right up on the front, you get kind of the fruit and then you kind of range into this like dried purple flower thing, which is characteristic of like the-, the Would you say like hibiscus? Hibiscus, hell yeah, for sure. I know, proceed. It does have a good like herbal quality to it. Uh, definitely think like a dried sort of black tea before you're steeping yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that olive tapenade is still there. Um, and there's definitely a woody character too. Um, I'm not quite sure I, uh, where to go with that one, but. Well, you know, it's, uh, you can go right to me. I've also been burning wood today, so that might not help. I wish I could burn some wood. That would be amazing. Holy shit, this wine is really good right now. Dude, right? Like, <laughs> you know, so like there are wines you drink out of a straw and they're wine. So this one, I've, I've kept it like in my pantry. So it's like maybe 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't keep it in the fridge, but like I feel like I'm in shorts. I sweat a bunch today. I'm in short sleeves. I feel like I could drink this on the back porch. Uh, yeah. Now, absolutely. and I feel like I could drink it like not. You know, even even when it's hot, it doesn't feel like one of those like hold your head underwater like mouth pucker wines. You know, it's like this this could live a buried life, which is what I love about you and this stuff. Right. Well, I think you bring up another good point is that like the the tannins aren't like super stringent; they're not super present. I mean, it, it's really easy on that front. Uh, in addition, yeah. to that, oh. the UV is low, the acid is high, and it is a wine that can definitely be enjoyed you know, in a summer evening um, or a fall evening now that we're kind of experiencing that outside. But that being said, like, I guess the point that I'm trying to say is that it's not super like viscous and dense and chewy that, you know, you have to like sip and like think about and then hopefully share it with some people because it'll be hard to finish the bottle. You can definitely yeah. take this bottle down, which is, I think is, you know, one of the main factors when I'm choosing a wine is like, is it, what is its drinkability? I think a lot of people sort of gloss over that detail about wine. You know, how drinkable is it? Like you taste it and it tastes amazing, but if it's hard to drink and yeah. get down and, you know, you might have to take a few days to finish the bottle or you don't, yeah. then the point is kind of, you know, null and void. I, you do, the, do your food thing while I drink a third glass probably. Okay. Like, okay. Wait, so, wait, this, wait, this, wait, maybe maybe I talk and you can drink. We'll edit that out. No, no, it's, it's fine. You're so Chad. This is this is fan. This is fan, and it makes it to me. It tracks from everything we've done so far. Like this is still in that wheelhouse. Like this yeah. is the, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the, this this is now sort of you know begging to be paired with, uh, meat. I mean, honestly, the thing that that really screams out to me is lamb. Um, yeah, like a lamb chop, a fatty lamb chop with this would be ridiculous. Yeah, like a lamb. I mean. Um, that, that being said, I mean, I also like to do Syrah with beef, um, that sort of black and white pepper element that I, uh, inherently goes with Syrah, it pairs yeah. very well with beef and like, you know, the, the, the tannins aren't super, uh, big, which is usually what people require for beef, but I, I don't usually recommend a highly tannic, uh, red wine to go with beef anyways, because if you're doing the beef right, you want to be able to taste it. You don't want to mask that all those nuances. Oh, for sure. That. So you want them, something that goes really well hand in hand with it and just sort of throws an element of like fruit and acid at it rather than like tannins and high ABV. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's really not your typical Syrah. And I think that's really the most important talking point to it. A lot of yeah. people are expecting that California Syrah that has like new French oak, a lot of alcohol and a lot of tannin, which is like, it's fine. But this one is just so much cooler to me. I, I like I think cool is the right description, honestly, because you know, I'm I'm same way I mean same way as you, right? Like I think that double IPA, like I want it oak, I want it smoke. And uh like that's cool. That's cool and I that is still a thing, but this is like that right that line of like, oh, like it has flavor, you know what it's about, but uh it's not rubbing it in your face. It's like that cool guy at the party, or cool person at the party where it's like, yeah, you've got a lot of fun things to say, but you're not, oh, it's just, this is who I want to hang out with now. Yeah. Well, I think it's a yeah. really interesting dynamic too, because you, you're getting into wine and you don't know if you like it or not, but I think you're, you're in a position where a lot of people are, where like, they, they don't like the typical California wine, but they do like wine that's like this. And this yeah. is California wine, you know, like it, it's a, it's a cool angle to be, 
presenting this wine in. I am going to put there you go. <laughs> Swine wine top tip. This wine works well with a second glass of this yes. wine. <laughs> <laughs> so Salud, but hey, so how do they buy this again, right? Like they go to the store, they go to the, uh, I mean, they okay, go to so the Swine wine, they go to. We can, we have it on our wine list in house. You can buy it in house Thursday through Sunday if you come and enjoy our tasting menu. Um, it is on the list for, ooh, I should know this, somewhere around. 65 bucks maybe lower we had a hell of a deal on this wine so um considering there's only 1700 made that's right pretty rare about it 2018 vintage um additionally if you order from barley swine online you do a takeout package or just buy some add-on items from us you can purchase this wine with food friday through sunday um yeah, pickup times are generally from 5 o'clock to 7.30. So uh, stock up on your wine. I should also say that all online wine is half off. So this is actually $30 when you buy it online. Okay. I'm not going to edit that part out so that I can buy it all. Yeah, great. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Okay. Yeah, That's dude, legit. Legit. Well, Stefan, yeah, it, is always a, it is always a pleasure. Likewise. Uh, I like that we both let's, – let's, let's do this again yeah. uh, where we both have the same thing. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the case. I'm digging it. And uh, f- before we go, final question, right? Uh, swine Wine ATX on the Instagram. Follow us. Uh, YouTube, we got this. Uh, hit up Barley Swine. They're on all the social media. But personally, is it too early to decorate for Halloween? No. If you can no. see, my, my yeah, wife I has love installed <laughs> I love uh, it. candles and crows and a lot of various other things. Love it. We are living for uh, Dio de los Muertos. Well, that's a little basic, but that's okay. I'll allow. <laughs> All right, I'm fired. <laughs> oh my God. Everybody on that one, good night. We're going <laughs> to.